would be none other than Lex Luger, or AKA, as in the WWF, they called him the Narcissus, the total package he was called in WCW, and um, I remember the whole Lex Express thing with the bus and WWF, where he was the all-American guy, but my favorite gimmick of his was probably the Narcissist, which matched his personality, um, you know, of the whole total package thing, and you know, he was very vain, and they really did rip him out and, you know, made him do the most muscular. I think that's what he's doing. Um, his move was the torture rack, and, uh, looks, it was pretty hard to pull off a torture rack with him, let's just say that. But he's kind of beat to hell, too, Lex. I used him a lot, even though I didn't really care for the uh, arms of the figure, but a very good likeness of Lex. Very good likeness of Lex. So there you have it for Lex. Next in the collection, but not least, is good old All-American Michigan boy, Rick and Scott Steiner, collectively known as the Steiner Brothers. Um, Rick later on will become more popular, I'd say, as Big Papa Pump when he dyed their out white and uh, had the white goatee, but he was with the Steiner Brothers, which are probably, one, in my view, one of the best tag teams there ever were. Right up there with LOD in my book. Um, Steiner Brothers were great. Great tag team. Um, that was when Scott could really move around. Rick was more the bulldog of the group. The dog face gremlin, as they called them, but the phenomenal. I guess there were plans to push Scott, but that never came through, and they ended up back in WCW, where he would eventually become Big Papa Pump. Um, okay, likeness on this one. Um, probably could have done a little better on that, but they gave him their classic, you know, singlets that they wore at the time. He was able to do the Frankensteiner, and that was all I was worried about. And the dog face Gremlin. They did pretty good on him. They gave him the ear muff that he wrestled with. That was a great likeness of him with the beard and everything. And he had the matching singlet, which was a different color, which the Steiners did a lot of. They never had a matching outfit. They would always have two different colors, but kind of the same. I don't know how to explain it. But they even gave him the bulldog tattoo on his arm which I thought was really neat so Rick and Scott were one of my good tactics when they jumped to WWF I was able to use these guys before they had WWF figures of them so there's Rick Steiner and last but not least I'm gonna save the Hulk Hogan of the era of these figures and that was none other than the man they call Sting and this was in his surfer outfit era um, he wore this for a long time up until 96 Six or 95, I think, when he came out with the Crow gimmick and never looked back. But a uh, very cool figure, as you can see. Um, good articulated paint on the face, nice likeness, uh, kind of a good likeness of him, not the greatest I've ever seen. But the, uh, he had the ponytail going on, rocking the surfer mullet, blonde hair, the blue tights, which I've seen him wear on several occasions with the scorpion on the side and that is uh... that will finish up the uh... review on my um... 1990 WCW Gloob action figures um... hope everybody enjoyed the uh... presentation and uh... i'll see you on part two about my WWF Hasbro figures later peace everybody